Hello and welcome to another episode of my quest system series. In the last one we set up our journal functionality and today we're going to do something completely different and add a health system and also begin to set up our basic enemy. Of course we will need some assets to create our enemy and I just wanted to show you where you can find them. So go to the marketplace, search for infinity blade and you will see Infinity Blade Adversaries. If you click, you could first download them, then go to your library, and you can add them to your project. So go ahead and do that, which will take some time. So just pause the video and resume when you've got that done. Okay, so now I've got them added to my project, and here you will see a new folder called Infinity Blade Adversaries. And you will also have a maps folder here, just feel free to delete that, we won't need that and it just takes up space. Also you can go to your enemies folder and remove everything except the skeleton, the enemy troll folder, the greatest spider boss and the great spider. We'll only use those assets. Okay, but before we get started with the creation of our enemy, there are just some things that I wanted to touch. Right now when we play, our journal is instantly visible. We don't want that to happen. Also, if we hit I, we can click once and nothing happens. And we have to click a second time to actually be able to click the expand button here properly. To do that, let's go to our third person character, open blueprint editor, and let's go to our I key actually. Move that over. Let's remove the flip flop here, and instead add a branch. We will connect the widget input to that. If that's already true, we will set the input mode to game and UI only and do the rest and if it's false do the other thing. Then we will add a custom event here, call that toggle input mode, connect that to the branch, rename our comment to say toggle input mode. Then we will just call that event when we hit I and add a comment box around that. Now let's go to a J key which currently completes the first sub goal for us but we will use a different key for that just add something like H disconnect J and we will add a comment around that H to complete sub goal and in brackets debug now let's do a J. We will need to get our main widget, get the journal, get is visible, and add a branch. If it is visible already, we will drag off the journal set visibility to hidden. Then we will add a branch if we have widget input currently. And if that's true, and only then we will call toggle input mode. Copy that, paste it for false. But this time we will set it to self hit test invisible. And only if widget input is false, toggle the input mode. Then let's add a comment around that. J to show slash hide the journal and make sure that you connect the journal to the set visibility node then compile and save also let's go to our main widget now set the journal to hidden by default so visibility hidden actually there is one mistake in the quest category widget that I made regarding the select nodes here we just have to reverse our entries so minus 90 for A and 0 for B and for the select node false has to be collapsed and truth self hit test invisible. Then we can hit play, our journal is not visible, let's get our quest. Then we can hit J, see our journal and expand the current quest and you will see my first quest ever. You can hit that again and it's hit. Alright that's it. Then the next thing I wanted to do is start to implement a health system that we will need when we fight against our enemies. So we'll do that in our main widget. Let's get the EXP 
var, copy and paste that. We will call that health bar. Move that somewhere up here. Make it maybe smaller because it's not that important for the quest system. Yeah, should work. And we will also modify the fill color to a green tone. We will add a text. Drag that on top of our progress bar. Set the Z order to 1. Name that health text. Show that's a variable. We will lay that on top of the progress bar. Set the justification to line text center. Font type will be, let's say, italic, and we will scale that down to, let's say, 10. And default text can be something like 50 slash 100. Same as with our progress text here. And we will set the color for that to black. Maybe to see that better, we can give it a one pixel outline in white. And let's actually scale up our health bar, because that's way too small. Scale up the text and increase the size to, let's say, 14. Yeah, that should work. And then we can remove our outline. Looking good. Close it. Open up the third person character. Here we'll need to create a variable called max health and another one called current health. Both of them will be integers. Let's create a category called health system. Put our current health in that category as well. And we will give that some default values of, let's say, 500. And type in the same thing for current health. Then we will add a function called update health. What that will do is just drag in our main widget, get the health bar, and also get the health text. First we will set the percent of the health bar, and we will set that to our current health, converted to a float, divided by our max health, converted to a float. Plug that in here. Then we will set our health text. And set that to a format. It will just be in brackets current. Then add a space, slash, space. And then in brackets max. Convert the current to a text, to text integer, uncheck use grouping, copy that for our max self and plug those in. Afterwards return, file and save, go to the event graph, event begin play. Here when we update the level update exp, we can add our update health function here. Let's also put that function into our health system category. File save. And then we will right click somewhere and add an event called event any damage. What should happen when we receive damage? What we'll do here is get our current health, subtract the damage that we will round first, And we will set the current health to that. Afterwards call update health. And that's what we'll do currently. Add a comment box around that. Event any damage. And when we play now, we can see a health bar, 500 of 500 health. And later, when our enemy will attack us, that can affect our health. Also one thing I want to show you is when we get our quests, and show our journal, you will see our red and green colored 
suggested level text. If we hit F and increase our level, that changes to white when we have the same level and then to green when we're above that level. Okay, that's it for our health system. Let's start with our enemy now. So first thing, blueprints, characters, and create a new folder called enemies. Then we will duplicate the master NPC, call that master underscore enemy, and move that inside of the folder. Just remove everything we have in here because we will set up the behavior using a behavior tree in the next episode. Also, we don't need the interaction widget, neither the spring arm, nor the question mark. Part save. But what we'll need is one variable to start with, and that is called is dead. Question mark. Now we'll need to worry about our assets. So let's go to the adversaries, enemy, enemy grade spider. We will set up a spider enemy. If we go to the enemy spider greater animation, you will see that we have some here. But we won't need all of them, so let's see what we have here. Yeah, the first one we can use, so let's rename that by hitting F2. That is spider underscore attack. We can remove the other attack and cast animations. What's the next one here? We don't need that as well. Then we have the dev, so that we will also use F2 spider underscore dev. Next one, we don't need that. Here is an idle animation, we will use that, so spider underscore idle. We don't need the react. And those other reacts here, we don't need that jumping animation here. And then we've got uh, some walk animations. So that is walk backwards. This is walk forward. So we will rename that spider underscore walk. Remove all of the other ones. And now that's the animations that we'll work with. We don't have a run animation for the spider. You can do that very easily by just duplicating the walk animation. Call that spider underscore run and we will just increase the rate scale to 2 and now that looks like a run animation alright then we'll go to animation and create a blend space 1D for our SK greater spider skeleton call that BS underscore spider let's check display editor vertically here the X axis label will be speed and it will be arranged from 0 to 360. Apply parameter changes. So if our speed is 0, we will just play the idle animation. So drag that in here. If our speed gets higher to something like 90, we will play the walk animation. And if it's really high at 360 or something like that, we will play the spider run animation. Alright, save that and we can close it. Now what we also need is an animation blueprint, so create that. The parent class will be anim instance and the skeleton will be SK greater spider skeleton. Call that anim bp underscore spider. Let's go to the event graph first and we will have to create some variables here. First the speed which will be a float. Then a boolean called is that question mark, which will be boolean. And finally a reference to the enemy. And the variable type for that will be enemy master enemy reference. Now we also have to set those variables. And there is an event called initialize blueprint initialize animation. So that's called when we set up the animation blueprint and we will try to get the pawn owner cast it to master enemy and then we will set the enemy reference to that 
Also we have an event blueprint update animation. So every time that should update we will set the speed variable and we will set that to our enemies velocity and we also need to get the vector length of that. Also we can get the is dead boolean and set our is dead boolean to that. Now that's everything for the event graph here. We can go to the anim graph now that basically defi defines which animation is playing. Here's our result, so the animation that will be played. And what we have to do here is get a slot, slot default slot. So it's just for use later on when we want to play other animations that are not in the animation blueprint. We can use that slot to define that. And then we will add a new state machine. Just call that whatever you like. Locomotion. Then double click to open that up. And here we've got an entry. So the first animation that we'll usually be playing is the idle walk run blend space. Double click and we will have to define an animation for that. Here on the right you can see the asset browser and our BS spider. Drag that in, connect it to the result and it's asking for a speed variable. So let's drag in our speed and connect that. When we compile and save you can see that our spider is now idling around. Now we also need another state, so you can hit that little left arrow here and drag off of the idle walk run, add a new state that is called death. Here we will drag in the spider death animation and uncheck the loop animation. So we only want to play that once. Okay, when you go back to your state machine, locomotion, you will see that little icon here that goes from our idle walk run to our death animation. That defines when we enter the transition from our idle walk run to the death. Double click and it's asking for a boolean. So we can just plug in the is dead. If we go back to our locomotion now that means when we're idling, walking or running around and somehow our is dead boolean is set to true, we will go into that death state and we will never exit that because we don't have any other transitions from here. Pound save. That's it for our animation blueprint. What we can do now is to go back to our characters, enemies, master enemy, go to the viewport and we need to set up the skeletal mesh. So just search for spider, SK greater spider, scale that down to 0.8 maybe or 0.7. Yeah, it should work. Then we will select our animation blueprint. And we will need to modify our capsule component as well, so increase the radius, file save, select the mesh, and we'll set the collision presets to no collision because our capsule component will handle collision. Okay, compile save that. And we can drag that into the level now. And now we have our spider idling around here. Okay, that's it for this episode. In the next one we will set up some patrolling and attacking behavior for a spider using a behavior tree and a blackboard. So see you in the next one.